Okay. So I'm really excited to welcome you, Brian. Brian Masterman of Masterman Hello. Photography. You are a longtime friend. I laughed when I posted that we were doing this because um, when Brian takes a picture that I'm in, he definitely knows how to retouch me. And um, we're live. And so this is me. <laughs> You're <laughs> but, right. Um, and it's so funny because we go through all of this right now about how to look good on Zoom and, um, you know, how to put your best face forward on Zoom. But the beauty of hiring Brian mm -hmm. is you always can have a picture perfect day. I say. <laughs> well, it's so. been my tagline for a long time because, you know, it's uh, something that people need to really think in that positive sense, especially, you know things are going on today. It's uh, something that always keep the positive mind. Um, and that's, that's the most important. That's what gets me through the day at least. So for sure. Yeah. How did you know? I mean, it, you know, photography is probably the most creative field. I mean, the eye to it and everything. How did you know you wanted to be a photographer? Oh, you know, I, it really started way back. Um, you know, way back, like in my bar mitzvah, I remember my uncle buying me a little Kodak Instamatic and I was just, you know, smitten by it. And I became like the little family photographer and carrying it around all the time. And then, you know, got a little dark room going in the basement and then, um, uh, you know, used my free press money to buy all the chemicals and so forth. And yeah, I just started uh, really just, just, you know, em embracing it. And then, um, um, fast forward that to junior high school, I signed up and volunteered for yearbook. And, uh, of course then with high school as well. And all the while I was, um, working on weekends when all my friends are out going out to the football games, um, you know, both in junior high and high school, I was out uh, assisting photographers at, uh, events, um, in and around the Detroit area. And, um, and then, uh, except in the fall, because then I was doing yearbook pictures for the football and um, a lot of the fall sports activities and some of the spring sports activities. So, you know, pretty, pretty busy. Um, and that was back in the day, I graduated Groves. Um, we, we, as photographers uh, for the yearbook had to do everything except for the, the class photos. I mean, we, you know, today they have photographers now hired to go do all these activities um you know by the school districts um but back in the day we had to do it all and so it was a ton of work and you know you learn early on how to work with people how to work with the writers how to work with the the, the designers they i guess they weren't considered graphic designers at the time but they did all the layout for the book and and you know and how to meet deadlines um so it was a big learning experience and then really enjoyed enjoyed that and then i just uh just fell into it you know um uh, uh, community college started there and, you know, uh, I got my associates minored in photography, then moved down to Wayne state and, uh, with marketing and business, um, and dropped out because of money. But I knew right away, I was in a position where I was starting to gain clients. Um, and, uh, I've never looked back. So I've, you know, again, just like they say, it's just the old hard work and, you know, yeah. long hours and, um, you know, just like anything else, the more you do it, the better you get. And then you, you'll just learn. So I learned early on how to, how to, how to photograph people, but best of all, how to associate with people, how to, you know, when you're really young and, you know, the, the brides and grooms and the, the, the parents of bar bat mitzvahs are a lot older than you, you need to try to gain that trust and respect. So, you know, you, you learn early on how to do that. And it's, it was, it's difficult. It's not for everybody. Um, especially being a photographer and shooting events. I mean, it's a one-time thing. You can't, you can't go back. You just can't. So you know, there's you not a do, there is no do over. There's no do over. <laughs> you always have to make sure you back up equipment because I've had to use it many times. You can't, you can't get that nervous, but you want to have nervous energy. You want to make sure it's right. You want to, you know, back in the day when we had to develop or send our film out, you know, you're just waiting and pins and needles, hoping that everything looks good so that the people will be um, hopefully positively surprised when they get the pictures. And so knock wood, I've, I've done thousands of events over my 30 year career. And, um, 
um, haven't lost any film <laughs> and haven't uh, had any issues, uh, think, thankfully, or at least issues that I wasn't able to resolve. And, you know, so as you grow, you know, you, you, you gain more um, staff and you go in and you sprout. And I got into the photo booth business 15 years ago and when it was still in its early stages. And, you know, I wanted to do more than just be there. So, of course, I've had other photographers photograph events and, you know, try to duplicate my efforts and grow a business. And, um, and you know, at the same time, take care of family, you know, trying to balance you know, your weekends and, and family activities and your children's sporting events. And um, it, it was tough, but um, I will have to say that um, on the most part, I was there for my children and I, um, you know, I tried not to miss any events. I may have missed a few, but, you know, I was there and, uh, and I found that balance and it's, it's a teeter totter and it's not that easy, but and um, with that, I was able to have a decent life for my kids and, and, and uh, myself. So there you have I, it. I, I think, you know, you, you've created this amazing career and it is a hard career in that you are needed um, at a time, you know, at times where it is family life, you know, you know, because you're out on a Saturday night or during the week and things like that. Um, but, um, you, you know, you, your, your kids have, are beautiful. Um, but um, I, I want to talk a, a little bit about uh, the photography. And I think it's really true, some of the things you said, that it's one thing to take a beautiful picture and, um, and do all that. But it's really the psychology of dealing with people. Um, I like to tell Brian I am his worst client um, <laughs> because I hate to have my picture taken. I think there's probably a lot of us out there. They're needed. Um, Brian did just do um, a photo shoot with me, which just took everything under the sun for me to call him. But nobody else, you know, I wasn't calling anyone else um, because, you know, there is a trust factor. Um, for sure, when, when you want to do a photo shoot, um, you, you know, it's not just that you want to know the photographer is going to show up or that the photos are just going to be good, but it is a trust factor of how you're going to feel. Um, one, if you're by yourself, which I personally was, but also, you know, on the day of um, a celebration that you are dealing with not just the person who hired you, which, you know, could be the bride, could be the bride's mother, could be a, a simcha again, you know, the, but you, all of a sudden you're like, okay, now go, vi, uh, now go um, photograph grandma over there who's, you know, kind of a pain, um, or they, the two aunts that don't speak to each other, you know, and you, you do get all those dynamics, um, sometimes you're told very privately, I'm sure. Um, and so, you, you know, you really un unbox that well, that that is part of your career, of how you have to deal with people. And I think um, I want to put it out there to people that when you are interviewing someone to come into your life cycle event, um, you, you have to meet with the person um, and sort of entrust in their character when you meet them. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to say that sometimes it is about the length of years they've done it, but also, you know, how does this person work in their job? And that, you know, um, uh, so I, you know, I commend you for really talking about that because it's really true. It isn't just about taking a good photo. Right. Um, I, I think, um, <laughs> I, I kind of want to speak to that a little bit because, as you know, I, I sometimes have to use other photographers in my own work for Instagram or things like that. And sometimes they're younger. I think they're missing that trait. Um, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Um, you know, it comes with a lot of experience. I mean, you have to be amiable. Uh, you have to be able to adapt um, to a lot of different personality types. 
And, um, you know, I'm a little bit more type A than others. So I'm a little bit more excitable and, you know, that's why we get along, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 that's something that, but it's not for everybody. You know, some right. people want a very, you know, a guy or a gal that's, um, just sort of in the background. They, they, they don't say much. They just are, they're the quiet photographers in the background. And, and because that personality type needs that, I understand. And I may not be for that person, but most people want to be led in some degree. They want to have someone that takes a little charge and they want to, to know that, okay, they're in good hands. This person knows what he or she seems to be doing. They have a sub certain ear of confidence um, and again, that comes with starting when I was really young mm -hmm. and just learning how to be more confident, uh, doing, doing the kind of work I'm doing. Like I said, when I was photographing, you know, my first wedding at 16 years old, I mean, I'm the 16 year old and they were in their, uh, early forties and, you know, I mean, they could have been my parents. Right. So I had to, sure. I really had to show that confidence and, 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 the, and then again, that respect and that really was difficult. You know, with today, the younger photographers I find today, I think a lot of them have that artistic flair. Um, they didn't grow up in the, you know, school of hard knocks and learning how to, you know, take pictures on film. Um, they grew up looking at the back of their camera. Um, and, um, and there's and a isn't lot- And that, I, I have to stop you because isn't that interesting? They get the do-over. Yeah. You know, that they, they do. I mean, they, they sort yeah. of um, on a job. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it now because that's the technology we're in. But you, you know, you come from the um, taking that picture, even though you now get the do over if you need mm -hmm. it, because I've been with you, you look, you make sure everything's good. Mm -hmm. But you come from the um, the standpoint of I'm going to get it right, then I look. Right, correct. They're, I think they're the newer um, generation is I can, you know, I can fix it. I yeah. can fix it right now. Well, then, not, not just that, it's that they, they, they're so um, entrenched in their, 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 their camera and making sure things look right that they're forgetting about, hey, there's a human experience there. Talk to people. Um, you know, um, let them know that, wow, this looks awesome. You know, be a, a positive yeah. force behind the camera instead of a quiet force. And I'm finding that with the younger generation, they don't seem to, have, I'm not finding that they have that kind of human and personal interaction that I grew up with, that I, that I know. And so I've mentored many, many, many photographers. And even though I can help them become a better photographer, I can't help them become a better person um, when it comes to building the confidence um, and just, just knowing how to talk to people, um, especially when there's the nervous mother of the bride and the nervous bride and um, sure. or the nervous mother of the bar mitzvah boy. And, you know, their, 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 their world is coming and crashing down and they need somebody there to, uh, to give them some reassurance. Some people, some photographers don't have that. They just want to just capture and be kind of at a distance and just let things unfold and, and be in, in more of a journalist uh, as opposed to a photographer. And there's a big difference there, you mm -hmm. know? And so you want to have a journalistic approach every time you, you're shooting. But then again, you want them to be aware you're there uh, and you're there for them. And so you people need to take comfort in that. And it just comes down to, again, you're confident. Are you confident person? Can you go out and do the job? Um, you have to know the camera like the back of your hand, just like a, uh, a construction worker who reaches for his tools. He knows exactly where his hammer is and where his screwdriver is, and he knows how to use them properly. Um, same thing, you know, you really, really got to be, you know, knowledgeable of your, of your tool of the trade, because you're, you're, if you, if you're not, you're going to, you're going to focus more on that than on, than on your subjects. And then when you lose focus of your subjects, then they lose focus of you. And you're not going to get those, um, those real great expressions, those lifelong expressions that you were hoping for. Something's missing there. So really, really understand the psychology of people. And you have to be able to get along with every group out there. I mean, whether yeah. it's Jewish or Chaldean or the Hindu Indian 
Um, you know, we are luckily in Detroit, we're so culturally diverse and I've had the fortune of, of photographing almost every culture out there and going to their, their places of worship and understanding and embracing it. And, um, and that comes with, uh, again, a lot of experience and I'm so happy that I've been able to do that. So um, mm -hmm. I, I want to talk to you a little bit about, cause we've, we have focused a lot on the fact that your career has been um, a lot with social events. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, um, as a publicist, um, I have engaged you a lot with product um, photography, um, meaning you have shot a lot of restaurant food, um, uh, different types of my clients. Um, and I think that people don't necessarily know that about AU. Right. that you do that and just I definitely spa recently we just we just did beautiful pictures of the spa we've done food and so talk to me is that new for you or always no no so you know I embrace you know a lot you know as a photographer I'm considered to be more of a general all-purpose so I don't find myself to have a, a real niche um so I try to do really good work at least the best I can in, in all facets, uh, whether it's doing architectural, um, real estate, um, product photography, where I photographed, um, I mean, one of my hardest jobs I did was uh, for a jeweler when I had to photograph, you know, a lot of uh, fine jewelry and not just that, but photograph the insignia, you know, to show that it's a 14 karat gold or whatever it is and, and get really close into the macro world. Um, and so that, that I learned and I, you know, I, I just dive into that and I understand along with YouTube videos, I just study and research before I do the job and then make sure I do it right. But like food photography, I've always, I love food. I like to cook. And so I started that many, many years ago. And now actually during, through this pandemic, um, I've been fortunate to, um, partner up with a international company. Um, who have um, contracts with DoorDash. So I'm going to anywhere from one to four restaurants daily um, photographing their food um, so that it looks, um, it looks consistent with what DoorDash wants. They want quality looking pictures. The problem is many chefs and cooks will send in pictures to companies like DoorDash or Uber Eats and um, Grubhub, and the pictures are just not good. Even though we have smartphones, and actually our smartphones take really good pictures, the problem is people aren't that smart, and they're not doing, they're right. not doing the right, they're not getting right. the right lighting, they're not getting the right natural light, they're not doing. I the try, I try really hard, <laughs> but I, I, if I'm sitting with my kids, they're like, "Mom, who do you think you are?" <laughs> like, you know, I try really hard on some of my photos, but it's true, we're not. We're not photographers. We're not even amateur at best, I like to say. We're, we're truly just out at a restaurant trying to say like, here's a great meal we're eating, but. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, it's great to capture those moments uh, with this phone. And I've got probably 5,000 on my phone and I just love, you know, the new iPhone Pro with the portrait lens and wide angle and you can take pictures in the dark and it's, it's, it's great. Huh? Mine gets me through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're the same. And, you know, um, but when it comes to uh, really capturing something that you know is going to really um, uh, look good on both the screen as well as on, on a printed product and eventually onto a wall or into a book, you really got to go with a, a quality lens with a quality camera at high megapixel. And then once you have that tool, then you got to learn how to use it right and get the right lighting and the composition. And then after that, you put the icing on the cake, which is if you have to add filters or using Photoshop to, to um, add more texture, things of that nature. You know, it's kind of subjective. You know, photo, photos are very, very subjective. Art itself is subjective, you know, meaning that what you see may be 
something different than what I see. And um, I may think look, something looks amazing. And then somebody else looks at a picture that I don't think is so amazing and they just absolutely love it. Um, and so I, I, it still boggles my mind why someone looks at something a lot differently than maybe what I would do, but that's, that's wonderful. Um, and uh, that's great. And that's something you have to be aware of. So, um, so going back to food again, I enjoy it because first of all, I just enjoy all the sense, you know, all your senses are alive when you're, when you're around food and then just to photograph something and show the texture and just the quality of the cheese melting and, mm -hmm. you know, the, everything's bubbling and, you know, well, you, I, I certainly can, contest, you know, do a testimonial to that. You have, you have done food product photos for me, um, the salon and, and many, many others, but, um, and, I, and I'll go back to the fact that you're um, with that, it's still utilizing not just the photography, but, you know, I have clients that you deal with, I, you have owners of the restaurant. Um, so there's many layers that when you come in, um, that you also work with too, which I so appreciate and people should know because the bottom line is, it's not just me bringing in a photographer, but it might be in the middle of a busy restaurant you know, and things going on and, you know, business doesn't shut down because you bring, you know, you bring in a photographer. It's not like I say, here's the food, go back to your studio. No, we're, we're doing it in a place of business. Um, and, you know, that's true. I mean, we were, was it last year? We were at the Maple Theater together and right. Doing Peter Post. We, yes. Mm -hmm. And the, his food is fat, fabulous. And yeah. uh, I really had a good time photographing his dishes and but lunch was know, going on you know and we you know we have to we have know, to we, be able to you know to, to do our job and be right. you know and understand that there are customers there and we don't want to disturb them and and that's something that you know you learn too as I'm going out to restaurants of course unfortunately they're not so busy now so I'm not around a lot of people with the exception of the chef and maybe a wait staff but um, you know, you, you, you want to be able to set up in your corner. The big, the first thing you look at is where is my best light source, mm -hmm. which is usually a window. And then now how can I direct that light source to the, to the subject, to the food and, and, and sculpt it. So it looks real, looks three-dimensional. It looks beautiful. It looks like something you just want to just you know, take off your digital camera and just eat it. You know, you right. just, it's, it's, and, it's and that's, true. that's important. That's what I, I, that, that's what I shoot for, uh, constantly. So, so yeah, going back to it, the food is, is one thing, but you know, there's so much other, other items in, 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 in what I do. And I, I'm the kind of guy that if all I did was events like bar mitzvahs, weddings, I kind of go crazy because I, you know, I, first of all, it, not only is it a lot of time that you're putting into it, um, it's just, it's just that it's just one, one item. It's just one event. Mm -hmm. I like, as I said, I love real estate. I like shooting that. I love shooting food. Um, I love uh, not only a, a events, but I do a lot of headshots. So I'm uh, now I have actually closed my studio um, in Kegel Harbor. I was there for 12 years and I closed it actually just in time uh, at the end of last year, just uh, pre pandemic. Um, I, I guess I got fortunate. So I thought, okay, now I'm setting up in my home. I've got a second bedroom. Now I made it into a nice office. I'm able to go on location. I have backdrops. I have lights. I have everything I need. And then of course the pandemic came and then there goes $150,000 worth of business. Uh, luckily most postponed, but, um, but you know, that's what happens. So you have to now say, okay, Nobody's calling, nobody, you know, is like, they're just, you know, everyone's staying sheltered. What can I do? And that's when you, not just as a photographer, but just in business, business person in general, you have to just put on your thinking cap and say, what can I do? Where can I shoot? You know, what's going on? And that's when I started doing research and I found a company that I was able to do a lot of work for. And uh, they also have um, contracts with um, a, a, an app called, um, um, uh, bring a trailer, which is people who who are looking to sell their their hot rods or their classic cars. Oh. They have to get photos. So I go out now uh, every week and I'm photographing some really cool looking vehicles that are going to like going on the market and they want real good quality pictures because they're being sold to people 
who are looking for that particular type of vehicle. So I've been photographing a lot of that again. So I, it's interesting because one of the reasons I, I did say to you that I wanted you to come on this FaceTime with me is that you were one of the people I thought of, of course, right away during the pandemic, because I did think like initially it's a, it's a, it was easy to think like, oh my God, there goes Brian's business. Every weekend you're at a simcha, a celebration. But the truth of the matter is you didn't. You did exactly what I had hoped you would do many of my business. You just pivoted. You, you really adapted, you pivoted, you, you, you thought, okay, you know, I'm not gonna lay down and go, you know, woes me, like I have no business. Um, it's not your style, first of all. But the truth of the matter is that you really, you know, did think like, I have my camera, um, you know, what am I gonna do and how am I gonna do it? And I love that. Um, and I love businesses that really did that or have been doing that because we're not getting out of this so quickly. Yeah. Um, and I think that there's something to be said about the businesses um, and survival of, you know, how mm -hmm. am I going to go on, be successful? Um, I mean, I know that, you know, you can't wait to be at a 300 plus wedding in the middle taking pictures. Like we all want to be with you at that and we will be. Right, right. But yeah, until, and, and until that time, mm -hmm. life goes on. Right. And, and just to make your point clear is that when you're an independent business person and, you know, uh, or a gig worker, if you will, you know, someone who's just taking jobs, right. you know, and, and trying to make a living, you, you, you really, uh, you're, you're thinking differently than others that are basically working for a corporation and working mm -hmm. for someone. They know that they have to report at a certain location, a certain time and do, do the best they can. And then they, they punch out and then they go home. When you're an independent, um, you know, entrepreneurial business person, when you're, when you're, you, you don't have that luxury. You, you are constantly looking to network, uh, which mm -hmm. is what I've been doing for many, many years. I used to be involved with uh, Business Network International, BNI. And so I got a lot of work from that. And uh, I'm, I'm entrenched in the photographic field of professionals in, in our in our community. You know, so you really, the biggest thing is networking. That's, that's, that's number one. You know, how do I get my my business, how do I get my business noticed? And again, we do have the, we do have these, these wonderful apps and marketing tools in front of us. Uh, we have social media that does seem to help, but the biggest thing is, is that staying in touch with your customers, understanding that you're still alive yeah. and that you still have a camera and your eyesight's still good <laughs> and physically you're still in good shape. You know, that, that means a lot. And that, so people will think of you um, and I'm not a big email blaster like I did years ago because people just start to unsubscribe when you when you blast them a little too much. So you have to drive that fine line. Mm -hmm. But, you know, making positive posts like you'll see me, I'm taking pictures of some of the food that I like to cook. To me, that's a positive post. I'm seeing a lot of negative posts out there politically, uh, politically speaking. And I, I stay away from that because, you know, it's just going to drive a divide between everybody. So the biggest thing is stick, stick with a positive post. Um, and once in a while, show some someone something great. I just did a post in a blog recently about this little young boy. I just because I've been also thinking, OK, nobody is going to school or at least a lot of kids aren't. And they're missing school photos. So, you know, now I am I'm going on location and doing school photos for kids. Oh, I love doing that. I'm doing it in a more creative way. So I did this little boy named James who's eight years old. And his mom had a, uh, a fall festive look going on in her yard. She had pumpkins, she had hay bales, she had corn stalks and mums. And he said, you know what? I want to create my own background. I said, oh, okay, great. And his mom's looking at him like, let the photographer just do his job. And I said, wait a minute, mom, let, let him let's see what he wants to do. Uh -huh. So he created this incredible little set with, you know, his hay bales and his pumpkins and mom. Right. I posted it on my- Yeah, my, I saw my, that. My, 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 and I put a story behind it because I thought, wow, this eight year old, so creative, so cute. And I, you know, I just let it do. And I said, you're going to create your own pose too, right? He goes, yeah, I'm going to lay down on this. And you know, I got these great expressions and I thought, wow, I would love to see more and more 
children do that. Um, and, you you and, may have a, a future content writer for yeah, your... Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, or, you know, or at least set designer. I set mean, designer I mean, for he, you. <laughs> he had a vision and he wanted to, and, you know, he had this, he's so bubbly, such a great kid. And, you know, his mother would just went along with it as well as I did. And of course, I did some nice traditional poses as well. Sure. But for the most part, I wanted him to do what he wanted. And I think that's part of... Uh, the excitement of being a photographer is you have these pleasant surprises and um, and then to capture those moments, it, it's incredible. You, you can never, you, know, you, you just, you're going to look back on that and say, wow, that was yeah. just so cool. And so, you know, that's, you know, that's just, you know, that's one of my taglines, look forward to looking back. And, you know, you want to look forward to looking back at some of these great moments and he just created just an amazing moment. So, yeah, you know, I have lots is of that's actually a good segue to my very last question, looking forward to look back, um, that you are a photo um, involved in photo restoration. And I just wanna take a couple minutes to talk about that because I think about um, all of us who have been home and we have photo albums after photo albums. And um, I know that, you know, I was great at my photo album days. I didn't scrapbook. I mean, I was never going to scrapbook, but God bless anyone who did. But I just, you know, used to put all my photos in a <laughs> photo album until basically I had my third child and Noah's always going to wonder where he was in life. <laughs> I'm like, right, right, right. Noah, you're in my phone. <laughs> I always see that Canon um, uh, commercial and it's like the kid hanging from the diving board going, mom, I'm like, that is me. Like, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel I always feel terrible I'm like somewhere right. somewhere someone is going to ask me for baby pictures of Noah and I'm like me yeah, a third child sorry yeah. but um my parents you know have moved and uh you know my mom was like I'm not moving with all these photo albums and so you know I've taken them they're in my basement they're just here because I don't want anything to happen to them but photos you know back in the day and through the years they don't last forever and um, even, you know, photos I have on the wall I, that were taken, you know, when the kids were babies, things happen to them. So tell me a little right. bit, you know, especially now when people are at home, you know, what they should be doing or thinking about. Well, so you know, um, photo restoration is, a, is, first of all, it's a very difficult process and it's something that requires a lot of patience and a lot of time. Um, but, you know, I, I've been doing that for quite a few years. Um, I enjoy photo restoration only because um, it, it, it's something that, you know, once you put the effort in and, and really um, understand how to piece things together, I mean, I've, I, I, I'm not going to share my screen right now, but the, everybody can go to my, my website and look under photo restoration, you'll see a lot of befores and afters. Um, but the, the, the thing is people uh, with flood damage or fire damage, um, mm -hmm. I've done some work for insurance companies as well. And um, there are people that are really, um, you know, emotional when they're losing or they have a, the only picture they've had of their grandparents. And it's literally almost obliterated from water damage. And what am I going to do with this picture? And, you know, I've, 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 I get stories constantly when someone gives me a, an old photo and they have such, such a backstory and they said, this is the only copy I have. I want to be able to trust you, you know, with this and I can be trusted with it. And, um, and so I go in and it would take several hours and then voila, you got a before and after and people are just, I mean, I, sometimes I get tears from people like, oh my God, this is so perfect. Sure. How did you do this? And of course I can't explain how it's done because it's just, you know, a lot of Photoshop work and a lot of work, but the bottom line is you're not restoring the old original photo. You're restoring a copy of it. So, you know, they still get the original back. So um, just recently I, uh, I, I had restored an old, early 19th century, um, very large group shot of a police, a Detroit Police Academy. And uh, there was a gentleman, I guess a great grandfather who was in there and they wanted, someone had a picture of it and it was not in good shape at all. It had cracks and missing parts to it. So I was able to put it back together and I put it on my website. I got four people that contacted me says, you know, my grandfather's in that too. Yeah. 
And by the way, my father is there. I want a copy of that. So, you know, it was interesting to see that. And it was a group of probably 85 men. Um, and it was, it was very old. So, you know, you get that sort of positive That's feedback. Awesome. So the biggest thing is, is that people, um, if they're not storing their pictures properly, um, they they should not be storing pictures in a damp environment. You know, they <laughs> should be put, um, on some sort of, a, underneath a, a really good plastic acetate that, um, is, uh, resistant to mold and mildew, um, or they should be just kept in a dark, dry, cool environment. That's just, it's very, di but the problem is even all, after years and years, the photo may be in good shape, but then it starts to fade and it'll fade from black and white to sepia tone to, to, you can't see anything anymore. And so those are the people that come to me. And so there's not a lot of photo restoration experts out there. I know Costco has gotten into the into the uh, market, but a lot of people um, and I've worked with Cod. Matter of fact, Costco sends a lot of their clients to me because a lot of people just don't want to, you know, send their pictures to to them. And just knowing that it's possible they have to sign away, it's possible the picture could be lost or, you know, uh, yeah. forever. So they want to be able to go to someone local that they know they can trust. And you know, I've been a trusted source. So I just urge people people just to go to my website and you can take a look. And if you've got an old photograph that is just in just terrible shape, come and see me and I will, I will improve it greatly. Well, Brian, thank you so much. And, and that being said, go to mastermanphotography.com. M-A-S-S-E-R-M-A-N. Yeah. M-A-S-S-E-R-M-A-N photography.com. Um, there's lots of information on there about Brian. Um, a lot of what we covered today, I hope, and so much more. Um, I, you know, you know, I adore you. Um, you can stay on my own social media, new new photos of me. Um, but you know and... what? You're easy to work with, Sarah. You're <laughs> very easy. Compared to some of the subjects I've had, believe me, you are at the top of my list of easy, easy, easy. Well, the good news is I do not have a career in modeling not even going to pretend. <laughs> I'm going to stick to my day job, which isn't this either, but I have fun <laughs> with it. I'm just having fun with it. It's one yeah. of those things that, you know, during the pandemic, you just want to highlight great businesses. And so yeah. um, you are one of them. And oh, I appreciate what you do too. I'm so always I, looking at your feet, uh, at your, at, at the Facebooks and I'm like, wow, she's got this guy. And I love the travel, the, the guy who forgot his name, but he, as a travel company. And, David uh, Fishman. David, wow. I mean, I learned yeah. a lot from him. I'm mean, just a ton because I yeah. like travel. Well, you I, know, I, he, and I talk, he and I talked this morning and, you know, people want to go. Look, look at your background. We were talking before about your, your background going to Israel. We all want to travel again. So, right. Oh, and just, the insights, and I have to say, just kudos to you. You're just getting such good insights on all these businesses that people are doing these aha moments. Sounds like, wow, I didn't know that. That's good to know. And then before you know it, like, I want to contact David and, and talk to him about a few places I want to go to and see if he mm -hmm. can set things up. I would not have known about him had I not seen him on your... Well, good. Your that, that's my, that is my goal for people to sort of meet one another. Right now, it's a lot, you know, obviously we know it's all virtual and businesses to connect, become a travel photographer. That's a great that's a great uh, gig. Uh, <laughs> indeed, yes, indeed. I, I when I grow pack, up, when I grow up one day, I'll I'll, I'll do that. I might pack my bag <laughs> with you, my friend. <laughs> I told them this morning. I said I just want to go somewhere. Um, right. All right. Well, as you like to say, have a picture perfect day. <laughs> thank you. You so, do. Great. thank you, thank you, everybody. Have a great day, and look up Brian at mastermanphotography.com. Talk to you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.